Hey, what's up guys? Roland Wolf here. Uh, just want to get into some trade recaps from today, and it happened to be my best day ever, um, in terms of gains at least, and that's on top of my best week in terms of gains, so it's been a great week. Um, but today was, I made about eighteen, about $19,000 today, which still kind of blows my mind, hasn't really sunk in. Um, but to kind of do a quick recap, I was long PLSE um, and it was kind of a bottom bounce type of play and I've actually been watching PLSE all year and I think it's Pulse uh, Biosciences or something like that but but I played a bounce type play a little bit a couple months ago I want to say and so I am very familiar with it and kind of how it moves it can move fast uh, it can be a liquid and the spreads can get kind of nutty, but but uh, today there was some decent volume, and we'll get into that. Uh, but my but my big trade today was OPNT, and that was a short, and it was actually a much higher price stock. Um, and I was overnight 1,500 shares. Um, but that was actually my biggest gainer ever, and I made $13,000 on the short today. And I mean, I'm I'm very happy about it. Uh, but I'll get into that one as well. And lastly, MRTX was just kind of a small after hours type thing um, on some news and it wasn't really necessary to take, but I was feeling pretty good. So anyways, I'll get into the trades and afterwards, hopefully I'll be able to show you guys a live trading clip from today. Uh, I didn't think about it until I think I was halfway through the trade or so, but but I did get catch some of it and I've been getting quite a few requests for that so I'll try to squeeze some live trades in here soon uh, anyways we'll get right into the trades for you so here's OPNT and it's kind of a funny story that I'll try to tell quickly but but a good buddy of mine called me a couple days ago well an old old high school friend and he told me to take a look at the stock OPNT and tell me what he thought about it. And I get that kind of question quite often. Don't really get into it with anyone, be, but uh, but I checked it out for him and, and I'm like, whoa, it looks like a pump and dump. It looks exactly like a pump and dump. And to which he replied, how can it be a pump and dump? It's not a penny stock. Um, and I said, it doesn't have to be a penny stock to be a pump and dump. I'm, and I said, it's not necessarily a pump and dump, but it sure looks like a pump and dump chart. Mind you, the chart looked like this at the time. Sorry, this is the daily chart. And it's up from the sixes, the fives and sixes uh, in July to 52. And just over the past week and a half, it went from 20 to 52. So it's made a huge move and not on, not a lot of volume, but, uh, but some, some decent volume. Anyways, long story short, uh, he, my uh, my buddy bought it at forty dollars, and he called me after this big red day, and he wanted to know what he should do. And I told him I'm not allowed to give him advice because I'm not a registered investment advisor. But if it were me, I would not uh, feel too good about it, and I would not try to hold and to break even uh, because that's what he wanted. Um, and I told him most likely if it were me and what I see, I see further downside. Anyways, I was actually happy because the, this didn't hit my scanner most, uh, because it was over $20 and my scans pretty much for the most part go up to $20. Um, but it was on my radar for a short and I was a little bummed. I missed that first red day, but, but I was still I mean, you can see there, it looks like there's some downside. Um, I did some quick research. They do, they, they, first of all, they were OTC, I think a week and a half ago, um, which, which strengthened my thesis on this, but they do actually have a product that's FDA approved. It's a, it's a Narcan nasal spray, Narcan for opioid, uh, overdoses. So, so there's a market for it and they're not, you know, they have they don't have no products uh, they actually have some sort of substance but still I, I'm gonna play the chart on this one is and that was kind of my decision um, so I got short in here yesterday um, I didn't I it 
started going down but kind of caught its legs and I got short into a little pop and I was short at 37 around 3730 I want to say and and yesterday I'll get into the uh, we'll get into the minute chart for you quickly but so here's the minute chart yesterday was really illiquid it didn't do anything and I mean there was some range it went from 35 to 38 and back and forth and I wasn't really tempted to sell unless some volume came in and it really started bouncing hard um, and I wasn't tempted to cover at 35 because I was kind of looking for a big picture move um, but as you can see it hardly did any volume yesterday and I just held my short throughout the day because I had shorted somewhere in here in the morning um, and then we'll get back to the daily chart I was actually I was actually barely looking at the minute chart today um, so here's the daily chart and this is today I was in right here yesterday 37s and once it cracked this low of day yet from the first red day I did start locking in some profits uh, but because it was so illiquid I was selling I only had 1500 shares but because it was so illiquid I was actually selling in 100 share chunks um, into each drop basically let's go to the five minute chart for you quickly here is today and it was just a beautiful beautiful short today and I was uh, I mean I was calm but I was very happy and and like I said it was pretty illiquid so I was only selling 100 share chunks throughout this move um, I was I was kind of thinking of swinging some overnight um, but I didn't want to get too greedy and it was coming up to some support it looked like at least on the chart in the 20s between 20 and 24 um, so that was kind of my goal when I took the short yesterday was to to get a sh you know try to get something down to this range um, and then possibly look for a bounce even and and I'll still be looking for a bounce but but instead I ended up taking all my profits uh, taking the rest of my shares off I think I had 300 left in the 24s and I ended up covering the rest of that for a $1,300 $13,000 gain um, and it's my first big short my first big win on a short um, it's not it's not necessarily your everyday pump and dump that you see especially for in the OTC markets and whatnot but I mean the chart whether or not it's a pump and dump it certainly was overextended so it's kind of an easy call for me uh, although I missed the first down day clearly it was gonna drop more um, had it not I would have cut losses but I didn't have to and today was really uh, it was I mean I don't want to say easy but it was pretty easy to hold through this move um, like I said when it started getting down into the 20 to 25 dollar range was when I was thinking about taking the rest off and that's what I did and it actually would have made for a good dip buy down at 23 um, three dollars or so of upside we'll see what it does tomorrow and Monday um, any big panic might be a good dip buy still uh, so we'll see we'll see about that but great trade there um, biggest trade ever and and it felt good not gonna lie I've been long so long biased in the past and but here's where the luck comes in because if my friend would have not called me I never would have known about this one um, and that's why social media is kind of cool and being transparent is kind of cool because you know had I not had I not been posting my trades and 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 whatnot there I would have had no reason to speak with this guy uh, so that's OPNT and we'll get into the next one quickly PLSE is another good trade and PLSE Pulse Biosciences they have gone on a crazy run this year from the sixes to a high of 40 and this whole run was stimulated by by a billionaire investor buy and he was buying up shares throughout this um, and they're basically worthless uh, apparently from the research I've done they have some product but it's 
it's like smoke and mirrors. Um, so you had this big drop back back in April, and then a really nice bounce from 17 to 40. Um, and since then, it's been coming down. This is the day I played uh, back in July, and and I remember actually I bought on the red day here as it was approaching this low from from May, and and I I won't get into that trade, but I but I made some good money on a swing. I actually bought it in the low 20s, and so I think I sold it in the 24s and 25s. But that was it. The downtrend continued. And then there was some bad news a couple days ago um, about their product. They withdrew from their FDA application or something. And we had a huge drop from 20 to 10 over the last three days, or 50% drop. And I was interested in this day right here yesterday is when it actually came on my radar. And and reason for that was simple. It was pretty simple. Just the chart just based on the fact that this is basically the last level until the next drop off uh, down to the sixes. And so I was saying yesterday, uh, I don't know if I said it in a chat or whatnot, but, but uh, to a couple of buddies of mine, we were talking and I told them that I was watching this for today. And sure enough, I woke up today and I was a little late to my computer. Um, actually, I placed this trade on my cell phone on the way to my office, um, which is a little risky, but but this is the bounce into close yesterday, and here is this morning. This is a one minute chart today. Uh, we got a bounce up to 1160, or a nice morning spike to 1160, and then the pullback back to 1080. Uh, when 1080 held, and then it started to grind back up, kind of a mini ABCD here. I actually got long, um, I think I ended up with an 1133 average and I grabbed 2000 shares, not too many. Um, and and it was really strong rest of the day basically. I, I sold some at 13, um, I forget what, I, what my average ended up being but I made about $5,000 on this one. And and it was kind of like a cherry on top today. It was, uh, I don't have too many details or lessons about this, but but basically it's a play that I like. Uh, I like looking at, I like looking at stocks where other people aren't necessarily looking. So I do look at the top percent gainers, but I also like to keep tracks, keep track of runners and watch them as they hit lows and watch when news comes out and see how they react and because if they can run they can run again and it's also it's also the fact that these stocks they don't move straight up or down they have to bounce eventually for the most part not all of them but but i'm looking a lot of times i'm looking for kind of unconventional plays uh not necessarily just what everyone's playing because there's a lot of opportunity in the markets um if you can find your niche and this is one of my go-to plays which is you know a bottoming uh, a stock that is getting beaten up badly um, and maybe starts getting a little overextended to the downside just like it can get overextended to the upside so that was PLSE and lastly MRTX I won't put too much time into this but this was actually after hours play they came out with some positive phase two results, uh, preliminary results that is, it's not top line results or anything like that. And it had a huge spike on tiny volume from five to 10, five to 11. And for me, I was thinking of getting a quick short in and I was a little late to the party. Um, I think I shorted it at, at uh, 8.50 or so. And it was just a thousand share or yeah, it was a thousand shares. I covered at 7.50. Uh, pretty quickly and then I bought some I think at 755 or 760 and sold it at at around eight uh, reason being is because while this was happening I checked the filings for them and their latest 10q showed uh, to the best of my understanding that there are millions of warrants uh, with exercise price of 0 0.001 um, so for me that it, 
it's a strong indicator for me not to be long tomorrow. And possibly if it gets overextended or there's a nice spike, possibly short it. Um, but it will be the first green day, so I'm going to play the price action. We'll see what happens. Anyways, that was another 1100 or so uh, to cap off the day, and it was a very successful day today. Um, anyways, I'll be watching OPNT tomorrow uh, to, see how, to see if there's further downside, to see if there's a bounce that I might be able to take advantage of. I'll be watching MRTX, and I'm personally not going to go long. That's just me, even though it has kind of a similar pattern as KURA did uh, earlier this week. But because of the warrants, I'm not so bullish on it. So I'll be watching MRTX tomorrow as well. And PLSE, um, I'll be watching that as well for maybe a possible short. Uh, we'll see how it reacts, though, and we'll see how the price action is in the morning. Tomorrow, I'm heading to Orlando for the Trader Investor Conference, and it should be awesome. So if anyone's there, come say hi, and I'd uh, you know it'll be awesome meeting everyone, and it should be a great weekend. Anyways, everyone have a good one, and I'll catch you guys soon. Bye. My name is Tim Sykes, and I teach people to trade stocks. I am a self-made multimillionaire. So this is the ideal trade that I'm going to talk about. I want you guys to understand every single aspect of this trade. 